How would you like to have this tasty, nutritious slowpoke tail? For one million Pokedillers. Yes. Squirrel. Thank you, Clumsy, for the follow. I appreciate that. Oh, we already put Breeze at the front. Oh, you're a good angler. Let's see if you can beat my level 6 Hulpit with no attacking moves. Level 10 Goldeen. Go, Breeze. Breeze, switch. Go, Proton. The reason I want a Thundershock on Proton because I knew there were some Water-type trainers out here, and then Proton could fight them. Also, this Goldeen has spec. It might be one level higher, but I didn't use Thundershock. Um, but spec is a Flying-type move, therefore it's resisted. Which brings me back to something I'm still not sure about, which I brought up a few times during the blue walkthrough. Goldeen has a single horn. When it uses spec, it uses that horn. When it uses Horn Attack, a move that it also learns a bit later in its level up set, it uses its Horn. The same one. What's the difference? Like, I don't know, when the bird pecks, it, it uses its beak. Which is a bird thing. Therefore, it's flying. And a Horn Attack is just a Horn, so it's normal. But why? What's the difference between Goldeen's peck and Horn Attack, in terms of just why the type is there? <laughs> It's just a bit weird to think about. It used the same horn, but one of them's flying and one of them's normal. Also, the horn attack's almost twice as strong. Breeze straight up to level 8. Let's go. Must have been high up in level 6 already. Proton to 10. Good experience from that level 10 Goldeen. It is an amazing... Yeah, there's some weird things like uh, in Pokemon when you think about it. Like, well, how does... Like, how does Primeape learn Iron Tail? You might think, oh, Mankey learns Iron Tail, therefore Primeape learns it, because you can obviously just take the moves that your pre-evolution has. Yeah, but Primeape doesn't have a tail. When Mankey evolves into Primeape, it loses its tail. And interestingly, I think it's, it's, it's in one of the Poke Park games for the Wii, that there's actually a move tutor in that game that teaches your character, because you play as Pikachu, that teaches your Pikachu Iron Tail. But that's actually a Primeape, that move tutor. And it's actually like, I don't know how I can teach you this, but I can teach you this. <laughs> so they actually make a reference to that themselves, the Pokemon creators. I've had a useful item shopping, so I bought it with your money. This is what I was talking about at the very start of the walkthrough. When you get to certain money thresholds, your mom buys you some items. So you can find it um, in the box in the PC where you can store items. We can, once we're at the Poké Center again, after we fight these few water trainers, we will be... Um, Seeing what item she bought first. It's probably something very simple like a potion or something. Magikarp! Every generation has a Magikarp trainer. Not all of them have six Magikarps though. I really would have liked to just use Breeze here because Breeze still doesn't have an attacking move. So I guess we use our electric mode. Denki Shaka. Also, Breeze, I think, is a simple nickname to guess the origins of in terms of, well, if you look at Hopip, and if you listen to its Pokedex entry. Why is Hopip called Breeze? That should be a pretty easy one to say. But why is Mareep called Proton? Can you come up with that as well? Why is Mareep called Proton? Where did that come from? Not much EXP. So actually, I'm just going to stay in with Proton to save time for switching, because this switch training isn't really giving Hulpit much at all. I say that as a level 15 Magikarp comes out. 
one that actually has an attacking move. Can you teach tackle to my Hopip so my Hopip can actually do something? It can Hopip learn Mud Slap? I don't think it can. But it would be nice. Because Electrons is electric and you wanted to switch it up and go with Proton instead. Electrons are indeed electric. Yes. And Electron and Proton are related. And with Electron, you're also already pretty close, but Proton is also a thing. And the, what's the diff- okay, what's the difference between an Electron and a Proton? Can you tell me that? The difference between an Electron and a Proton. An electron has a negative charge, and a proton has a positive charge. That itself doesn't immediately tell you why I went with proton for Marie. However, in later games, starting with Generation 3, um, they introduced abilities into the game. And there are these abilities called plus and minus. Originally, these, these were exclusive to the Pokemon plus and minus. Obviously, plus had plus, minus had minus. However, I think in Generation 5 through, I think, Dream World, it came up with the hidden abilities, um, which gave some older um, abilities to, well, gave abilities to older Pokemon to give them an additional possibility. I think Ampharos only had Static at that point, and Mareep and the, well, the entire Mareep line. But Mareep um, also gained plus. I think it was a Kling Clang, there was a Kling line that gained plus, and Amph the Ampharos, no, it gained minus, and then the Ampharos line, so the Mareep line gained plus plus positive positive charge proton and just having a charge works with electricity too that's why it's called proton And I hope it's called Breeze because it flies in the breeze. It likes to have a breeze of wind and then it just... It floats over. That's all. It's, it's not that, uh... That's, that's much easier of a name. Don't think Proton will be able to do this, especially if it doesn't wake up early. This is the difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 in terms of sleep as a status ailment. Uh, Gen 1, you couldn't attack on the turn you woke up. Gen 2, you can. I remember, I think I found that out in... Much later in the game, in, um, in the Evil, Steam, Evil Team's hideout. I want to say it was with the pseudo Wudo that I found that out. It can't have been the first time a Pokemon was asleep. At least that's, that's a moment I remember, that it evolved the pseudo Wudo, probably my own, in the hideout. Or something. I must ask creative with my nicknames. I'd name Mareep Sean because of cartoon character Sean the Sheep. Well, for these walkthroughs, I'll mostly come up with names like that. A bit like easier ones like Breeze and a bit more thought into them like Proton. Um, but often, and maybe I'll do that for some of the Pokemon, especially Pokemon that I don't really intend to use much. Um, I just call them really easy things. I, I, I catch a Pokemon, let's say I would catch a Poliwag. I'd look around my room See the first thing I see plushy. I see a Hackmon plushy, so I just call it plushy. Uh, next Pokemon I catch, I see first thing I see is scissors, so I call the Pokemon scissors or wallet or window or anything like that. And it doesn't make that much sense, but it's funny to me. Or I call them exactly what they are. I think in, in, in the Pokemon Blue walkthrough, I had a, I bought the Magikarp in the Route 3 Pokemon Center, just just in front of Mount Moon. I'll call it fish. Because it's a fish. I remember uh, Judo, a Judo I could call Rock, and then Reggie Rock is Big Rock. Pidgey is Bird, and then Hootsu I think is Birdie, and then Fletchling is Birdie Bird, and Taylo is Other Bird. Starly is New Bird. I think I came up with all the like all the flying types at the start. I came up with names like that. Bird, 
birdie, new bird, other bird, birdie bird. Just names like that, but they all included the word bird. Wallops would be a great name for Meowth because of Payday. It actually would. Actually, off stream, like, I, I don't intend to stream this ever, but I uh, yesterday I started doing a Pokemon Platinum Randomizer Nuzlocke. And I actually caught a Houndor that had Payday. You, you talking about Payday just reminded me of that. There's nothing really else interesting to mention about it. But I had a Houndor with Payday. Also, I haven't even fought the first Gym 3 Pokemon already dead. Although, like, one of them I don't even remember how they died, because I was... I think it was a soul rock of mine with Earthquake, and I was fighting a muck. And then I looked away for a moment, and then the battle was over, but soul rock was dead. So I don't know what the muck did, maybe use Destiny Bond. And then one of them died to... I don't remember what, like, it had... I think I used, yeah, it was Larvitar, and the opponent just needed a water or grass move to take me out, and it had Frenzy Plant. Yeah, that was actually the, the soul rock that I caught. Killed my Larvitar. And then I lost another Pokemon very early on. One of my first roots was uh, I caught an Electabuzz. But that same root had a Dialga. And I was just fighting that Dialga with my Electabuzz. I wasn't able to do much damage because I only had moves that uh, Dialga resisted. So it was using some pretty weak moves. I was using some moves that didn't do much. And then halfway through the fight, it suddenly went EXPLOSION! And then Electabuzz was dead. That was my first death. But yeah, <laughs> that's the thing with randomizing those dogs, you can never really know what to expect. Everything could have explosion, everything could have Frenzy Plant and Hyper Beam. It's a lot hard to prepare for, which can make it really interesting. Also, the champion could have things like Caterpie and Pidgey, while the trainers in the first cave could have Dialga, Rayquaza, Ho-Oh, and Mewtwo. My first Nuzlocke was Pokemon Y, where I turned off the XP share. Yeah, I, I always do that in Nuzlocke. I generally do that during normal playthroughs as well. So, when I get to Gen 6 and up, if I, if I can even record it at that point and stream it, I will turn it off. And I lost all my Pokemon except a Mr. Mime to Valerie. Okay. And then I went against a Dublade, and Mr. Mime sadly died, losing me the Nuzlocke. Oh, that's unfortunate. I, have I ever lost a Nuzlocke? I haven't completed some Nuzlocke's. Not sure if I've ever lost one. I definitely never had a Nuzlocke where nothing died. Not sure if I've ever lost a Nuzlocke. That possibly I have, but then I like continued on for my last save. So then officially, like once your party wipes, you're dead. It's considered I didn't make it. I'm not sure if I understood that rule. It's just, oh, your six Pokemon died. You can try again, but those six are dead. You just try the rest. I might have done that, I don't remember. I've done a decent amount of Nuzlocke's, but yeah, I will be doing Nuzlocke's of all main series Pokemon games that I have done a walkthrough of already. So, Gold is my second one, I started with Blue. So somewhere, is, I, I will be doing Gold streams quite regularly, like probably two a week or something like that, um, to get through the game, and then I'll edit those into YouTube videos. Um, so people on YouTube can watch the walkthroughs. But I also do bonus episodes for all of the games that I do. And I have two bonus episodes up already for Blue. And one of the other bonus episodes I have planned is a Pokemon Blue Nuzlocke. It's all those Nuzlocke's are going to be standard Nuzlocke's. So no randomizers. Um, just standard as the game is. Uh, however, I will be using some extra rules. Almost certainly. Because the standard is just catch the first thing on the route. Nickname the Pokemon if it faints, it's dead. Those are the three basic rules. But I also intend to do no healing in, um, no using items in battle. Held items are allowed, but like no healing in battle. Um, and um, switch thing is to set, so you can't switch when the opponent's like, "Oh, your po opponent's next Pokemon is a Pidgey. Would you like to switch Pokemon?" That'll be off. I can't do that. So yeah, add to the challenge. I think there's one other rule that I often use. Alright, Breeze learned Tackle. It has a damaging move. It's still not great. Breeze is still not an attacking Pokemon. But it has Tackle. It can do a thing. 
Oh, that's it's just yes, I can click on move. This thing I loved in this game. Not only can you swap the order of moves like this, but you can see how much power a move has. You didn't have that in Gen One. Gen One, you had to guess. Obviously, I can now just look it up on Boldopedia on Serbi or wherever. But it says how powerful a move is. Tackle is 35 power. 40 power for Thundershock. Things like that. I thought that was a really cool feature. I would use water gun with scales, but I still don't have water gun. <laughs> Has to be next level, right? came just in time. Because I believe this guy is geoded. I have beside damage moves I have besides water gun. Tackle, thunder shock, which doesn't do anything. Tackle, peck, tackle, rage and scratch. I would deal very little damage. But now I have water gun. Also, thank you to the another change between Gen 1 and 2. Moves like bind and wrap don't make you unable to move. They just deal a bit of damage off at the end of every turn. 116th is your max health, I believe. But you can still move. Good improvement. So Hope it now has tackle, but hasn't really been able to do anything. Because even though it'll, its tackle is normal effective against the sand shoe, sand has pretty good defenses, and the whole pip still isn't a good attacker. So it can do something, but yeah, that, that's the thing with whole pip. Whole pip is part of the main team, and it will stay on the team until the end of the game. The problem with whole pip is it doesn't learn any good moves early, so it, it will be a big challenge to just. Improvise during the walkthrough. I haven't really thought this out too far. What I'm gonna do with Whole Pips moves and how I'm going to use it. Because I like I'll switch train it quite a bit, especially early on, but eventually I do want to start making it do moves. But the TMs for the grass moves, one of them's in like the last third of the game, you could say. And one of them is only after after about halfway halfway through. And the first damage and grass move it learns as a whole pip, I think, is level 30. But it's already evolved at that point, and it becomes level 44 or something like that. 
So, I'm not fully sure. I know what, what the final move set is that I want to have on Opip. But not quite sure what I, what, what I want to do to get there. That's not something I, I figure out at the start. Normally. Although I have one move for Mareep, I do have figured out that it will be like a stand-in move for something else later on. Also, after this battle is over, I am going to take a, a bit of a break from the stream. I'm not going to close the stream, but I am going to have my dinner, and that will be away from the stream. I'm not going to eat on stream. So I'll, then I'll put it on a beer right back screen, and I'll be gone for 20 to 30 minutes. Assume it'll be closer to 30. I'll have my dinner, come back, and continue with probably another couple hours of this walkthrough. That is my intention, but just so you know, I will be gone for 20 to 30 minutes, and then continue the walkthrough from there. Um, before I start again, I will post it in the chat, so if you're interested in continuing to watch, you can just occasionally like, go to another tab, do something else, just occasionally tab back in. If I put it in the chat, I'll start again in the next few minutes, then like, I guess pay a bit more attention. Because I will probably say, like, I'll start again in one minute, or I'll start again in five minutes, uh, once I've had my dinner. Go, Skills has taken quite a few hits from the Onyx and the G different G dude. But that does help Skills get some EXP, and hope it gets some as well. Zubat Supersonic keeps confusing my Pokemon now, but that's annoying. I'm seriously upset about that. Me too! Like, it hasn't happened much. I haven't seen that many Zubat, which is great, but Supersonic is an annoying move. It's confusion in general, because it's a chance-based status effect. And then, but Supersonic is that annoying, especially if you're using it yourself, because it's 55% accurate. Then again, like, I prefer the opponent have Supersonic than Confuser, because then they'll miss almost half the time. Which is a good thing. Also, Coughing doesn't resist normal moves, or flying moves, like Tackle, and Peck, and Scratch. However, Coughing has a strong defense stance and a lower special defense stance, so Water Gun is still the most effective move. Leveling Proton, but I'll keep switch training here because it seems well doable. Actually, I could have used Thunder Shock. That's another special move I have with Proton. I already selected skills. Water or grass move for in a cave for things like Judo and Onyx. There's the Judo. And there's me running because I don't want to fight a Judo. Great ball. Wait, I was gonna check if Mudslap can be learned by Hulpip. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But that would give it another move to use, and I would like that. Nope, Flutters and even Scales can learn it. Wow, huh. I didn't know that. There's no. There's not a lot of electric types that I'll be facing, so I don't really want to teach it to any of them. How do you plan to evolve your Onyx if you're going to? Um, I'm not going to. I just got the Onyx to show off the in-game trade, so I caught the Bellsprout, traded it for the Onyx. Onyx is just there to fill up the party slot. The moment I catch something new, Onyx is the first one uh, to go out. 
Um, otherwise, what I generally do with trade evolutions, I didn't. I don't think I had a trade evolution in gen in in blue, but I do have one or two trade evolutions planned in later games. Is just off stream, like between streams, or I'll just pause the stream for a moment. I will trade it to another game and then trade it back. Something like that. I, th I remember in um, there's. Actually, I need to do some trades for specific moves for my Pokemon later on in the game. Because I built the team with certain ideas in mind for moves. However, I forgot that those moves cannot actually be taught in um, gold, only in crystal. But I do still intend to go with those moves, so... It's not f like fully only on gold, I mean, you use something that's in crystal. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't call it cheating. It does feel a bit weird, but I, I decided I'm okay with it. Um, but when we get to that, I'll explain a bit more about how I do it, I guess. The trade evolutions are I obviously if I would have evolved the me uh, Onyx, I'd still need the Metal Coat item. So I'd wait until I have that, and then trade the Onyx, trade it back. So many wild encounters. On. Wait, there's a TM coming up. I wonder if Breeze gets that. Actually, I'm not gonna teach to Breeze because I know there's another move coming up a little later. It'll be in a couple levels time, but that's a move that's even better than the TM that's like right after this guy. Right, let's see what you can do. Tell it. First battle on your own. Let's go, Breeze. Even if a tail whip, it took me that much. Come on. Really? That's just sad. The thing is, if it if that's the best slow poke can do, I have synthesis to heal. The thing is, it's still morning in the game, so I won't heal that much. The synthesis only has five power points. But this make me think about something. If I ever do a Nuzlocke of... Well, once I get to the Nuzlocke of... Pokemon Gold, because I will be doing it after the main uh, walkthrough is over. It's a move like Synthesis and Recover and Leech Sheet will be very useful, considering I'm not allowing myself to use items in battle outside of the held items that Pokemon are already holding. So, then, for the sake of potentially using Synthesis um, on one of my Pokemon, which isn't too likely, but it's possible, I would want to play during daytime. Not only to make the game look prettier, but so that moves like that work. Uh, this isn't looking too well. We can get it out. Maybe with some more, two more syntheses, I can do it. Come on. I could also use the potion, but I have synthesis as well, and that way it'll feel more like Breeze is actually one that fight on its own once it. Wins. Stop dealing more damage than I'm healing. You crit too many times. You're a slowpoke. Actually, it doesn't matter. Speed doesn't matter here. Tackle. I might just make it as long as they don't get a critical hit. I need one more. Go tackle. Hopip wins the fight. Hopip is king. Go breeze. Level up. Level 13. Trying to learn Poison Powder. Yes, that's useful. It's not a damaging move by itself, but it is a move that can help damage Pokemon. I will take that very much. Oh, I clicked on the wrong buttons. Okay, Pokemon Larry has been defeated. The Breeze now has Poison Powder, which is a nice move to have. Helps damage other Pokemon. And we'll put that in the second slot. Now it's actually a higher level than Flutter's the Hoot Hoot. Because we've been switch trading it quite a lot. It's time for Proton to do something. Can't do much against the Geodudes and the Onyx and stuff. And Sanchu. 
but it can hit the Zubats very well, so I'm hoping to encounter Zubats, because then I can just Thundershock them and hit them super effectively. Hey, Zubat! Nice to see you, Thundershock! TM39, the second TM you can get in the game, containing Swift. Decently powerful, normal move, 60 power, doesn't miss. Proton and Flutters can both learn it. Huh. Swift isn't a move that is on anyone's final move, so... So I can teach it just for anything. Thinking of a Pokemon that I'll catch in the future. No, that one will have a better move. Sure, I'll just teach it to Proton. Because there'll be a better move than Swift available. In not too long time, so then I might even replace Swift. <laughs> Another zoo, but that's going down. It's a proton. Thunder shock. Wassa. I found a pretty, a pretty interesting sound. I like that sound. Wassa. In Gen 2. Just saying that. Wassa. I said that quite a lot with my brother when we played. Uh, I had crystal, he had gold, and we battled each other pretty regularly. Had our link cable, took us out the vacations, someone else with the game. It was fun. <laughs> 